Hello, my name is Katso Möhle and I am the first and presenting author of this contribution to MedInfo 2021. This work was a collaboration between three research groups from the Vrije Universiteit de Bristol, Belgium. I am affiliate, affiliated with the Clinical Pharmacology and Clinical Pharmacy group, and we collaborated with the Biostatistics and Medical Informatics group, as well as with the Skin Immunology and Immune Tolerance Research group. Our overall goal is patient safety and avoiding medication errors. And specifically for this project, our goal is to prevent prescription of medication to a patient with a known allergy to that or a similar medication. And clinical decision support systems for drug allergy screening can be a very valuable tool in achieving this goal. However, this type of clinical decision support systems have several issues. There is a low alert specificity uh, leading to low alert acceptance and acceptance rates below 15% are quite common. Reasons are outdated and inaccurate allergy information, under reporting, but also over-reporting. And unfortunately, allergy information is often captured in pretext formats which are often not accessible and thus not usable for real-time clinical decision support. Concerning drug allergy documentation, experts agree that we should avoid pretext entries as much as possible. There's also consensus on how to characterize a drug allergy, so there are a few essential data elements, which are the allergen, which can be documented as a substance, a product, or a drug class, the reactions or the symptoms that the patient experienced, the timing of onset, was it an immediate or a delayed reaction, the timing of initial reaction, so when did this happen, and diagnosis status, was this confirmed by uh, tests, for example. So this is quite clear. What is less clear is how we should capture these essential elements in an electronic health record so that all hospital physicians are able to accurately document drug allergy and not only the allergy specialist. So this leads us to question the usability of the drug allergy documentation models. What is the user experience? How can we improve the user experience? How can we as developers, health physicians, to completely and accurately document an allergy so that we help to improve the source information that these clinical decision support systems for drug allergy screening are using with the ultimate goal to make these systems more effective. So, we designed a structured and coded allergy documentation module, and we opted to use the Belgian substance codes for the substances, the ATC level five codes for products, and we defined a list of relevant ATC level three or four codes for drug classes. And using the Belgian SNOMED CC descriptions and codes, we um, made a list for uh, relevant symptoms and reactions. So this is more the IT side, but what is actually even more important is that such a module should be intuitive and easy to use for the end user. As a developer, you design a graphical user interface, and of course you think that it's intuitive and easy, but one can actually only be sure when we try and let an end user use it. So this is why we need usability testing of potential graphical user interfaces. Potential is very important here because it is before implementation in an electronic health record. And this is what we did. We did the usability testing study and we will use uh, the quantitative and qualitative results from this study to design a final version that can be implemented in an electronic health record. So we did a comparative usability testing study comparing three graphical user interfaces or GUIs. 
GUI Zero is the current version of the allergy documentation module in our electronic, in electronic health record, which is called Primus. It is unstructured and in free text, but end users can select a date, um, a start date of the allergy. GUI 1 is the first new version of the allergy documentation. It is coded, structured, and it is deliberately kept relatively short, but still asking the five essential data elements, which were allergen, reaction, timing of onset, timing of initial reaction, and diagnosis. The GUI 2, the, the second uh, new version, asks the same five data elements, but there are more options, so the user um, can more specifically characterize the allergy, and there's also more support in the form of search filter functions and help text. So this study took place at the University Hospital Brussels in Belgium, and 25 petition end users participated in the study. We tested each GUI through means of five fictional test scenarios of um, allergy history taking. And as we can see on the figure on the right, we started each session with a pre-test interview on the current module. Then we uh, gave five test scenarios for GUI zero. And after that, we asked the participants to complete a system usability scale or SUS questionnaire to objectively measure satisfaction. Then we randomized them one to one to avoid a learner effect. So some first did GUI one and then GUI two, and then the other half did GUI two and then GUI one. And after that, we, at the end, we did a post-test interview uh, on the overall user experience, where we asked for strong and weak points of each GUI, and we specifically asked for their preference, so their preferred GUI. Of the 25 participants, there were, there were 14 male participants, and 13 were specialists in training. And the median years of experience was six, ranging from half a year to 20 years of experience. And we also wanted our uh, sample to represent different medical specialties. And if we look uh, on the graph on the right, uh, you can see that we um, succeeded in that objective. From the pre-test interview on the current allergy documentation module, we are now focusing on two particular questions. Left, um, you can see that 17 participants indicated that they never or hardly ever used the allergy documentation module. And interestingly, this is not because they do not document allergies, it is because they document them elsewhere in the uh, electronic health record, mostly in the consultation or hospitalization notes. Reasons for this are that they, found, they find the current module too confusing, too limited, or they simply didn't know it existed. And this is also reflected in the question on the uh, opinion of the current module, where we see that only three persons were satisfied with the current uh, allergy documentation module. On this slide, um, we show you the results of the three SAS questionnaires each participant had to complete. So there were 10 items, and for each item, there was a five-point Likert scale, and we scored each item with a score ranging from zero to four. The 10 scores were then multiplied by 2.5 to obtain a maximum overall test score of 100. Um, so for example, if we're looking at item nine about feeling confident while using the interface, we see that the mean test score for GUI one was rather low at 1.80. And for GUI one, this mean score was uh, 2.84. And for GUI 2, this was 2.96. So we see an increase in the level of confidence 
uh, of the participants. When we look at the overall SU scores for GUI zero, this was 56, which translates to an adjective rating between OK and good. And for GUI one and two, this was uh, the mean SU score was respectively 77 and 78, translating to adjective rating between good and excellent. We also confirmed the differences statistically using three Wilcoxon signed rank tests. And we um, saw indeed um, a statistically significant difference between GUI 0 and GUI 1 and between GUI 0 and GUI 2. Then at the end, we did a post test interview on the experience of the participants. And um, now I will um, talk a bit about the recurrent comments for each GUI. So for GUI zero, um, several participants said that um, there was a lack of important information in GUI zero because it was not requested. They found it absolutely not supportive and they acknowledged that this led to highly variable documentation in terms of quality, which was perceived as negative. Uh, GUI 1 was found to be short and uh, less overwhelming compared to GUI 2. But on the other hand, the lack of specificity and options was perceived as a disadvantage of GUI 1. And then GUI 2 was seen as the most specific and most objective GUI to document a drug allergy, but there were mixed opinions about the diagnosis options because they were uh, confusing to some. And then, as mentioned earlier, we also specifically asked about the GUI preference, and 20 participants answered that GUI 2 um, was clearly their preferred GUI. And for three participants, GUI 1 was equal to GUI 2, and two participants said they preferred GUI 1, while no one said um, GUI, GUI 0 was the best GUI. So although the SU scores didn't really point out a winner, here with this question, we saw that GUI 2 was actually the best one. So we learned that uh, it's really important for physicians to have enough options and enough support to document a drug allergy when they are not allowed to describe everything in free text. Um, so this is actually very valuable feedback because it allows us to know what is important for physicians when they are documenting a drug allergy. Um, but it also allowed us to identify the strong and weak points of each GUI. And now as a next step, we can create GUI three, so to speak, uh, which will be a mix of GUI one and GUI two, adding also the suggestions of the participants, for example, about the options um, of diagnosis status. And then this GUI can be implemented in the electronic health records um, with the ultimate goal of improving the source information for clinical decision support for drug allergy screening. And here on this slide, I provide you with a summary of um, the usability study on graphical user interfaces for drug allergy documentation. And I also provide you with my email address and a link to my LinkedIn profile. So if you have any questions or if you wanna know more about what we did and how we did it, please don't hesitate, write me an email, send me a LinkedIn message and I'll be more than happy to 